Whoo, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done. You've done your registration, all of your book sessions, and you've designed the book. Let's see what it takes to print the book. Oh, hey, if you just found this video, you're gonna wanna make sure that you watch all the videos in this playlist, kind of Netflix, Petflix style, organized for you here. Every phase of the project is covered in the playlist. There's a lot that goes in hand in hand with the design phase, but printing the book, you have a lot of different labs. And the lab I went to was Marathon Press, and I was lucky enough to interview Martin at PPA's Imaging this year. So, take a look. Hello, I am at Imaging USA, PPA's big conference, and I have the pleasure of meeting Martin Pugh from Marathon Press. Hello. Hi. A lot of you are considering doing a book project of your dog and pet photography, and Marathon is the place that I had my book made, but there's a lot that goes into the printing part of making a book. Martin, what is some things that we should all know? Okay. Well, a lot of photographers, uh, this may be their first time that they're using InDesign to lay out a book where they're quite experienced with Photoshop. And the, the primary way that we receive the files for a book project is generally through InDesign. We can work with other formats as well, but it's not as maybe as efficient to use it that way. And uh, what we were talking about right before the interview here is that a lot of as you're designing, your, uh, a lot of the photographers like to look at the images in, in a spread, in a spread view. Like two, two pages right, at a time. Yeah. And one of the, the very first uh, rules of thumb is that the very first page of a book is a solo right-hand page. And we've had, we've had a couple of um, misunderstandings on that sometimes where they don't understand that it doesn't start on the left-hand side. It starts on, on the right-hand side, a solo page. Yeah. And then after that, every, every page is a spread. And so the second thing that um, with a photographer that's never used InDesign before is when, when the files come to us, we, we want the pages to have what they call a bleed edge around all four sides. And that is simply a setting in your, as you export to a PDF file, you want to save it with 0.125 around all four sides. Those are two of the biggest uh, issues that we see from time to time that when the files come in, we might miss that that page wasn't page one and it what would throw off the sequence of everything because we're not editors we we try to catch everything that we can um, the fact if you don't have a bleed edge around your your files that you've saved we'll have to kick that back to you and have you fix that so those are the two things that very common that happen on a regular basis with new customers and bleed edge is different than a margin I found that out. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I can go over that in another segment of this video, but yeah, that's super important. And I think a lot of photographers kind of know that, but it's super important in a book layout. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What is kind of the timeline, would you say? I, I don't want people to get too tight of a timeline. Right. So uh, in our first step, we're going to receive your files. We're going to take um, usually about two to three days. We will send you back an email proof. What we're doing in that time is we look at the files, we get it set up for our press, and we essentially send you back the same PDF file that you check. Ideally, you're gonna have all, no typos or anything at that. All the editing will be done at that point, but if you do catch anything, it's real simple at that point to still catch, send a new file and correct it. But after you approve that email proof, we generally go to the next step, which is a hard copy proof. And we'll generally take about four to five days to print an actual proof on the actual stock so that you can be checking it for color. And we'll FedEx those out to you. Um, after that point, we, we rarely have any issues with that, but if you would have issues with color calibration, then you could tweak your files, you could uh, 
you know, color correct your files according to the proofs that you saw. And we go through that whole process again. So it's always a good idea, like you were talking about, to add in that you might have a second go around. And if you don't, that that's good. But um, after you approve the proofs, generally, depending on the time of the year, we're going to be anywhere from two to five weeks production time. I say the five weeks at a little bit busier times of the year. There are certain times of the year where we may not be able to do custom book projects just for a short period of time in November, December, and uh, sometimes in, in May, where we're doing a lot of yearbooks and things like that. So those would be the things that, that cause a little bit of delay in the time. But generally, for most book, book projects, unless there's something a little with more complicated finishing processes, we might want to allow a little bit more time than that. Okay, plus shipping time to get it to your house. Plus shipping time. <laughs> we generally ship larger orders, uh, would be shipped by FedEx Freight. So those, those can go anywhere from one to two days to most points in the country to three to four days to both coasts. Uh, we ship to Florida, Rhode Island, California. You know, we ship all over the country. Um, smaller orders will ship by FedEx Ground. So again, three to four days to most points, one to two for most of the central states. Yeah. So if you've never done a book project, give yourself, I gave myself a whole extra month because they're not looking for typos. They're just looking for layout and color. And so if you get the proof back and you're reading the printed proof and you're like, uh-oh, there's a lot of typos. You got to go through that whole process again because uh, they only do so much. <laughs> but that's super helpful to know. And you're based out of Nebraska? We're in Nebraska. Nebraska. Yep, we're in Norfolk, Nebraska. Okay, so if you're kind of thinking how long will this take to ship? What's the time zone? Because I've actually gotten on the call with Martin before. Like, please help. Like, you probably get a lot of calls of people in tears. Maybe. Well, um, <laughs> You know, we, we can we can ship things overnight, but that can get expensive yeah. uh, to, okay. Good to, point. to ship uh, the bulk of your shipment overnight can get very costly. So the best way is to stick to allow yourself that time so that we're shipping by ground or by freight, depending on the weight of the package. My rule of thumb is anything over 200 pounds, it's, it's a good idea to ship it by freight. And that way the boxes are on a pallet, they travel across the country without getting jostled around. But if it's a smaller shipment of maybe one or two boxes, we can package it real nicely and ship it by ground and, and it'll still arrive in good condition. I, I, have, I want to reiterate too, he's very helpful. So you can reach out and uh, email him and your associate is Kate? Uh, Kate Jansen is my, my uh, partner in, in, in book production projects and she's valuable to both me and all of our customers very much so yeah so likely if you reach out to marathon press about your book this is how you're going to talk to this guy Thank you. <laughs> and you have a dog don't you i do i have a dog named bella oh. 15 years old oh. chihuahua terrier oh my gosh a little thing <laughs> yep and we have two shop dogs i'll mention lexi and and rex and they're great pyrenees they're the opposite size of my dog big gigantic shop dogs that we have so that we've rescued from the local um, oh local. I didn't know that oh yeah oh, that's fun I'll oh. show you pictures okay okay <laughs> all right well thanks so much for clearing up some of that and I it's really there's a lot of steps but you can do it and marathon will help you yes 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 okay thank you thank you <laughs> you know one of the things when you go to get it printed is to review all of the copies when you get them in. Um, they were having a little bit of trouble with their presses and some other things. And so there were some defects in some of the books. And that was, I was so glad I got the books in early because I'd looked at that timeline that you need to open those boxes as soon as you get them of all your books and make sure there's no defects. But with Marathon, they immediately reprinted them and sent them to me. So they really made sure that it was right. And it was this guy. <laughs> he was the one I was typing to. I he would call me on the phone. A lot of people in that Facebook group are like, 
I was calling him crying because I didn't understand how to do this and what am I doing? And, and they're really, really good at Marathon Press to help you through the whole process. These, This is the company that makes the loan collection books for PPA. Uh, so that's who I went with here in the United States with Marathon Press. What I recommend is to talk to them early in the process because you'll wanna know um, exact margins and exact bleed, those are two different things. <laughs> and then exactly where the page numbers go, things like that. But also I suggest you order a proof copy. You can get these loose like I did, or you can get them bound, it just takes longer. So for mine, it was just like this. This is really to make sure the color's right, and I think that's about it. <laughs> they don't proofread any of this. They don't look at your spelling. They don't look at any of the design. This is so you can make sure nothing's coming off the page. Colors are how you like them. And you can get this again. You can get a whole bound copy. It just, it wasn't gonna work in my time frame and my budget. And then um, what happens is once you know how many pages, they'll give you a template for the cover because you don't know how thick the spine's gonna be. And so I just printed it out really small <laughs> just so I knew it lined up because there's the gutter on the book too, which is right here. So I suggest, I highly suggest you get a proof copy too. All right, so once the whole book is done and you've printed it, there's all this information in the course about pre-selling the books. So make sure your clients have a chance to buy them when they register and all throughout the process, talk a lot about pre-sales. So you get those all at the bulk discount at the printer. All of these places will do a bulk discount. Um, so I ended up getting 100 books and that made the price come down, but I wanted to make sure I got those pre-ordered as many as possible. And what happens is a lot of people, I had a lot of people call me later and say, oh, I actually need another book. Do you have any more? And I'm so glad I had extras. All right, I hope that answered some of your burning questions about the printing phase of doing a book project fundraiser. But now, what about the launch and what you do from here? You're gonna wanna watch the next video.